Wilhelm II was the last German emperor. He was the eldest child of Frederick III, German emperor, and Victoria, princess royal, but he was not an only child. He had seven younger siblings. In this two-part series, we will learn more about his siblings. In the first part, we covered the lives of his sisters. In this part, we will look at the three brothers of the last Kaiser. Prince Henry of Prussia was born on the 14th of August, 1862. He was the third child and second son of Frederick III and Victoria, Princess Royal. As a baby, Henry was quite restless. As he grew into a toddler, he would cry to be carried around and was quite attached to his mother, Victoria. Victoria found his behaviour difficult to handle. He would often throw tantrums when he did not get his way and would kick and scratch the maids when they didn't do what he wanted. When he was only three years old, Victoria sent him to spend the winter with his maternal grandmother, Queen Victoria, hoping she could help. In 1863, Henry's parents bought a rundown property and refurbished it into a farm, which allowed the family to live a simple country life periodically. During winter time, Henry and his siblings lived in Berlin, and they spent their summers in Potsdam. Due to his father's position in the Prussian army, Henry's father was often away from home. His mother was strict with her children, expecting them to exhibit moral behaviour. She raised her children in English-style nurseries and fostered a love of her native country in several of her children by incorporating aspects of English culture in the home. Like his older brother Willem, Henry was tutored at home by George Hinspetter, who described Henry as being intellectually slow. As he grew older, Henry became quite good-natured and most people had something good to say about him. After the deaths of Henry's younger brothers Sigismund and Voldemar, Victoria indulged her younger children, Victoria, Sophia and Margaret, while being harsh to her older children, Willem, Charlotte and Henry. When Henry was 15, he entered the German Imperial Navy and over a period of two years he travelled throughout the world as part of his training. He passed his naval official examination in 1880 and attended the German Imperial Naval Academy from 1884 to 1886. Over the course of his naval career, he held several high-ranking positions, including Commander of the Baltic Sea Naval Station, Commander of the High Seas Fleet and Grand Admiral of the German Imperial Navy. Though Henry and Willem had been close growing up, after Henry joined the Navy, their paths in life diverged and they were never as close as they were as children. Growing up, Henry fell in love with his first cousin, Irene of Hesse, and she fell in love with him as well. Irene was a grandchild of Queen Victoria, like Henry. On the 24th of May, 1888, Henry married Irene. By this point, Henry's father, Frederick, had become the German Emperor, but he was dying from cancer. The marriage was a loving one, and they had three sons together, Voldemar, Sigismund and Henry, named after Henry and his deceased brothers. Unfortunately, Irene had the haemophilia gene. She inherited the gene from her mother, Princess Alice of the United Kingdom. Valdemar and Henry were both haemophiliacs and both would succumb to their condition. Valdemar died in 1945 during the Second World War after being unable to get a blood transfusion and Henry died after hitting his head at the age of four in 1904. During the First World War, Henry was appointed to Commander-in-Chief of the Baltic Fleet. He successfully prevented the Russian Navy from attacking the German coast. 
At the end of the war, Henry's brother Willem, Emperor of Germany, abdicated as German Emperor and King of Prussia. Henry left the army following this. Like many members of his family, Henry was forced to flee Germany, and he spent the rest of his life on his family farm near Schleswig. Like his father, Henry died of throat cancer on the 20th of April 1929 at the age of 66. Henry was similar to his father in many ways. Both were good-natured, humble and trusted easily. Henry also appeared physically similar to Frederick. Ultimately, Henry lived the life that his brother, the former Kaiser, secretly desired. A happy marriage with an intelligent, supportive wife, a fulfilling career, and a loving relationship with his English relatives. Born on the 15th of September, 1864, in Potsdam, Prussia, Sigismund had a close relationship with his mother, Victoria. Sigismund's older siblings were not allowed to be breastfed on the orders of his paternal grandmother, Queen Augusta of Prussia. They were fed by wet nurses. By the time Sigismund was born, Victoria had enough self-confidence to defy Augusta and breastfeed Sigismund herself. Perhaps it was this experience of finally having some say in the care of her children that fostered a special closeness between the mother and son. In a letter Victoria wrote to one of her mother's ladies-in-waiting, she wrote about how happy she was with Sigismund and that she truly loved him much more than she did for her eldest three children. As he became a toddler, Victoria thought he would grow up to be cleverer and more intelligent than her other children. However, Sigismund would never grow old. On the 4th of June 1866, during the Austro-Prussian War, Sigismund's father was fighting on the front lines. Most of the doctors were taken to the front lines as well to heal wounded and ill soldiers. The day after Frederick left, Sigismund became quite fretful, more so than usual, and soon he was unable to eat or sleep. After one day, he could no longer stand nor walk. Because the usual doctors that cared for the family were not available, Victoria was forced to consult doctors unknown to her. They gave her the terrible news that her son had meningitis. At the time, there was no curative treatment, or any kind of treatment really, for meningitis, and death was almost guaranteed. Sigismund began to convulse, and he died on the 18th of June, 1866, at only 21 months of age. His death had a profound effect on Victoria, and she never recovered. She wrote of the pain of seeing her son suffer a fate so cruel and how much it haunted her. Frederick was informed of Sigismund's death by his mother, Queen Augusta, who personally went to the front line to deliver the bad news. He was given permission to return home for the funeral, but refused to do so stating that it was his duty to serve his homeland and that he could not be absent from his job. Understandably, Victoria could not comprehend this and was inconsolable at the loss of her son and the lack of support from her husband. Victoria also received little support from her mother. Queen Victoria wrote to her, telling her that the death of a child is not as bad as losing a husband. Victoria prepared a small room in their home for the small coffin, accompanied with carpets, cushions, pictures and flowers. At the funeral, there were few dry faces. Prince Valdemar of Prussia was born in the Crown Prince's Palace in Berlin on the 10th of February 1868. His birth came 20 months after the tragic death of his older brother Sigismund. 
Valdemar's mother, Victoria, was overjoyed by his birth and wrote to her husband to tell him of how happy she was to have such a dear little creature to hold and nurse. Valdemar quickly took Sigismund's place as Victoria's favourite son, and Victoria hoped he would be everything his older brothers Willem and Henry were not. Valdemar loved to visit his maternal grandmother, Queen Victoria, at her home, Osborne House, on the Isle of Wight, off the coast of the United Kingdom. Valdemar collected rocks and minerals that his mother labelled for him and placed in the Swiss cottage, where she had played and learned to cook as a child. Valdemar reminded Queen Victoria of her deceased husband, Prince Albert, due to Valdemar's love of natural science. Valdemar was a spirited young boy. During one visit to Osborne House, Valdemar placed his pet Bob in his grandmother's study. Bob was a small crocodile and he gave the Queen quite the scare. All was well after Valdemar retrieved his crocodile. In February 1879, Valdemar celebrated his 11th birthday. Little over a month later, Valdemar complained of a sore throat. He was diagnosed with diphtheria. Diphtheria is a bacterial infection which affects the mucous membranes of the nose and throat. It typically presents with a sore throat, fever, swollen glands and malaise. The mucus can block the throat and cause the person to struggle to breathe. Diphtheria is rare in today's world due to vaccinations and if contracted there are treatments available. However in 1879 diphtheria was not curable and many patients succumbed to the disease. This was the case in December 1878 when Valdemar's aunt Alice Grand Duchess of Hesse and her daughter Marie both died of diphtheria. Victoria took all precautions known to help at the time. She washed Valdemar daily in a bath of hot vinegar and water and changed his sheets and clothes daily. She would wash his clothes in carbolic acid. Victoria also covered her own clothing and sprayed herself with carbolic acid after tending to her son. Though he appeared to be improving, Valdemar deteriorated on the 26th of March 1879 and passed away shortly after midnight on the 27th of March 1879. Victoria was devastated by Valdemar's death. She wrote of how she would grieve for the rest of her life for him and that she could not comprehend how Valdemar was no longer around. Valdemar was buried with one of his mother's nightgowns covering him and one of his father, Frederick's handkerchiefs covering his face. The funeral service was held in New Palace, which was attended by household staff, Valdemar's teachers and family friends. Victoria did not attend the funeral. Valdemar was buried beside his brother, Sigismund.